everybody. Chuck and Stacy here with VO Buzz Weekly. Happy you're here with us. We have the bilingual actor, coach, composer, and musician, Alfonso Lugo. Let's get buzzed. Turn it up. Get ready. You're tuned in to VO Buzz Weekly. Weekly. And now, prepare to get seriously buzzed with your hosts, Chuck Duran and Stacy J. Aswan. Well, our guest is a force in the world of voiceover and in the world of music. He is an accomplished bilingual actor, singer, composer, producer, jingle maker, and all around amazing guy and a dear friend. We are so excited to get buzzed with the fabulous Alfonso Lugo. Oh, Alfonso thank Lugo. you guys. Welcome. Thank you so much thank for having for me. Here. Thank How you so much you? for having me. Good to see you, man. This is just an the honor. The list of talents is endless. I yeah. need a scroll. Yeah, you know, it's so funny because... <laughs> it's so uh, hard to capsulize people in these, you know, but it's, we want you to talk about, you know, your journey and everything, but um, it's, we met you a few years ago, and it's been so cool to get to know you better and to see how the world has shifted for you and, and just the things you've gone after and accomplished and... Yeah. Super proud of you. Yeah. And one of the Thank cool you, things yes. about you, man, that I have to say, you're not we're not gonna let him talk that yeah. much because we're just gonna talk about how it's great a roast. He is <laughs> this is a roast, but a good one. No. A but, toast. You know, one of the yeah, a toast. I love that. One of the greatest things um, about you that I've seen, you know, in uh, the last, you know, year or so that we've gotten to know you is Alfonso has a, a recording studio here where I have my studio yeah. and Stacy and I have this VO Buzz Weekly and stuff and so we've gotten to know each other pretty pretty good. Yes. <laughs> and man, one of the cool things is that I love it when people make a plan to have success. Mm. And that's exactly what you have been doing. I've been watching you very very closely <laughs> and I'm like everything very that you strategic. have everything that you have in your life, you can't really say, "Oh, I got really lucky cuz I was over there." You plan for it. You know what I mean? You're totally. like, "I have to be there because of that, and then I got to go over there because of that." Yeah. So, congrats to you, man. Thank you really, so really much. Cool. And Absolutely. now we should let Alfonso talk. Thank you so now much. Now we're going <laughs> to let you talk. And actually, you're mentioning this and yeah. that's the foundation of my coaching you know, to have a strategy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Actually, I was in, um, well, several uh, conferences and conventions yeah. in the voiceover world. And, um, and the last one I did, it was back to basics. Back to basics. Exactly, and I have this, um, it's, it's not mine because I studied from different places, different, different stuff, but I just adjusted for, for the voiceover world, for, mm -hmm. for my, my world, you know? It's called the KSE. Probably you heard about this. It, it's, you can KSE. find it, the KSE. It's, you find it in books, you find it in, in online, you know what I'm saying? Like some new guys are just using it as well. Mm -hmm. But it's super simple. It's called knowledge, strategy, and execution. So, you, and you develop the whole thing in order to get somewhere. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So that's exactly what I did. Yeah. Well, that's cool. Well, you guys <laughs> yeah. are going to learn today a little bit about mm -hmm. knowledge, knowledge, strategy, and execution. <laughs> KSE, K -S -E, baby. The yeah. KSE. KSE. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. So freaking cool, man. Um, so I'm gonna. We're gonna jump right in here and yeah. just uh, ask you some questions. Are you ready? I am ready. <laughs> More than ready. So I want. First of all, tell us a little bit. Um, give us some of the highlights of how you got to LA because you didn't just. You weren't born here, you actually got in here. So what happened and what got you here? Yes, well actually I was uh, dreaming about coming to LA since I, since I was a, like a young guy, you know what I'm saying? Because Well you're still a young guy, younger. so you mean a baby? <laughs> younger guy, a little tiny baby, a little tiny Since I was like, like this, this like no, no I, I knew this, I knew yeah. this since forever, I don't know why. I just, uh, I'm, I, I was in love, I'm in love, uh, uh, like LA, is like the ultimate uh, goal in every music producer life, you mm -hmm. know? And I'm both, I'm music producer and voiceover talent. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it happens that LA is the most important Latino production site in the United States. Hello. You know, yeah. like, of course, New York, of yes. course, Chicago, of course, right. Miami, of course, Texas, but LA is the most important one, if you know what I mean. So, how can not? Right, you know what I'm saying? Yep. Like, I think thinking coming was pretty obvious for yeah, me. Absolutely. It was super, super obvious for yeah. me. And, and, um, and so, and so, so you from Mexico though you moved to 
Texas, right? Yeah, I, I was living in Mexico reason. City. Yeah, I was living in Mexico City, but I lived in in, in, in the United States before when I was 22 years right. old, and I I could feel this, and I knew that I wanted to live here. You know, it was mm -hmm. like not not here. I, I was living in Illinois. Yeah, I was doing some uh, training programs. I, I got certification in Pro Tools, and Beautiful. back at the but you know, like I was 22, yeah. and um, and I knew that I was I was. Um, dreaming about coming to, to the States at some point. But it happened that when I moved to Mexico City, because I was born in Morelia, in a small city, yeah. small city, two million people, small city. <laughs> small city. <laughs> but it's considered compared small for Mexico, LA, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And compared to LA too. Mm -hmm. But I was living there, and, and when I moved to Mexico City, I, I developed my career there, and I gotta say that Mexico City is a good spot to develop your voiceover career, because mm -hmm. it's a big city, chaotic as New York, as LA, a little mm -hmm. bit yeah. more, mm -hmm. more yeah. hectic than, than yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, and, but a lot of opportunities. With a lot of opportunities. Yeah. And it's, um, it's big for Latin America. It's very big. And it happens that the Mexican accent is the closest accent to the neutral. It's not the same, yeah. mm -hmm. I gotta say that, but it's the closest. Right. And uh, and so it's super important for dubbing, super important for international campaigns. Even in Mexico, you can find productions that, that they go to Brazil in Portuguese. I, I speak Portuguese as well because I lived in Brazil. Mm -hmm. So I had a lot of opportunities there. Mm -hmm. And even with my strong and strong accent in English, I was I was recording some some things um, because sometimes you don't need to be perfect but you need to communicate. Mm -hmm. So Mexico City gives you the opportunity, the opportunity to get into campaigns um, or like big um, projects or whatever. Actually, I, I won a um, Cannes Award with one of the campaigns I voiced in Spanish and English. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. And I did the music for. Mm -hmm. It was nice. a bronze, a bronze Trifecta. lion. Yeah. So, and because I was in Mexico City. Mm -hmm. So I don't know, it's a big city, it's amazing, it's good for, um, uh, a lot of sharks, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. and then you develop that. So you're, you business. really have to be savvy, not only as a talent but as a business person. Exactly. Yeah. And I gotta say that I was a partner in this company. We used to have uh, four recording studios there, and all of them were, were producing music for for TV commercials, and we were doing voiceover all the time. Mm -hmm. And um, I was thinking about yesterday, uh, 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 about this, to, um, to include this in this interview, that one of the things I consider helped me a lot in my voiceover career, it was, it was that I had the opportunity to be in the studio, not only as a voiceover for mm -hmm. only the, the session, but as an engineer, as a partner, you know, like I was, I was uh, hosting all the sessions yeah. with all the creatives from agencies, right, right. the clients, the final clients, the producers, directors. So if you are there before the voiceover talent comes and you stay there after mm -hmm. the voiceover yeah, talent you goes, you get all the good stuff. You get all the details. <laughs> yeah. How That's they, cool. how they talk about the session went and what's missing. You know what's good, what's not, yeah. and of course I was I was uh, like you know handling all these sessions uh, with the best talents in the mm -hmm. in the in the industry. So I learned from everyone. Were there any common overlying themes when you had those pre and post session conversations you were involved in that just were always kind of present? <sighs> <sighs> We always forget that our clients, they have a goal in their companies. They need to reach a number of sales. So we get so passionate about stuff sometimes that we forget that they have a number and uh, a, like, you know what I'm saying, like uh, some pressure mm -hmm. and they have to accomplish something. Yeah. Right. So we have to be facilitators, if, if that's a word, help me out with facilitators. my- Facilitators. Facilitators. Mm -hmm to accomplish those those uh, goals. those goals. So yeah. if if you're dealing with a session that the creative wants to win an award, international award, but the client wants to do sales, there's a competition there. Mm -hmm. yeah. So and of course the voiceover talent is it's there. In the <laughs> it's in the middle. Yeah. 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 
so, so <laughs> at the end of the day, <laughs> okay, I have to, you know, like make, make this guy happy, happy yes. and this, make yes. the other guy happy too. But we need to just get somewhere because otherwise they're not gonna call me again. Right. right, right. <laughs> yeah. We have to think about your business as well. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So a lot of times. The rush of the city, like the rush of the campaigns, uh, you were missing like very, very um, important points. And that's what's happened. That, that's uh, what happens when, when the voiceover goes, you know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. here in America, um, it's more, it's well structured, all the sessions. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like in Mexico, they don't have they don't have one like time frame, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. that session could be 15 minutes and you can go home or it could be like four hours. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Like, you and just of course, stay till everyone's happy. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And in a big city like Mexico City, sometimes the, the, the head of the department is not in the session. You know, it's probably they, the, some, some other guy and mm -hmm. you have to send the audios. Mm -hmm. You have to wait, you know? Yeah. yeah. But again, it, you have to learn the game. Yeah. I was yeah. surprised when I moved to the States that... Um, it was a lot easier. <laughs> it, was, it was a lot easier. And I was so happy. Well, so, okay, so you have this incredible career going in Mexico yeah. City. You're composing, you're acting, you're producing. But you say, no, no, no. I must leave and come to America. <laughs> was that how yes. it went down? Yes. Did you no, do that with no. your finger? No, no um, yes. But I mean, why... What made you say I'm gonna go and start over? Basically, oh, it's a, it's a it's a big question. Um, I dream big. Mm -hmm. I dream big, and yeah. um, in the voiceover world, I think in Mexico City, I I, uh, I reached my ceiling, and yeah. of course, I could do more. And but being the voice of the one of the most important banks in Mexico for six years, and uh, can can we say brands? Of yeah. Course. Of course. Okay. You know, of course. <laughs> okay. Like, like at some point, I was I was recording a lot of brands there, and um, and if you were watching TV, five or six commercials uh, were rotating in important yeah. events. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, and I said, okay, this is cool. You know, what are some of the brands that you voiced. Uh, right? I'm the voice. I'm still the voice of uh, Mercedes-Benz, okay. uh, Yellow Pages, um, and Burger King. Uh, it's so funny because in Mexico I'm the voice of Burger King and here I voice some other <laughs> yeah. competition. Yeah. But it doesn't matter. No. Like your fast yeah. food, do you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. a lot. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. at the end of the day, um, there are different markets. But, um, and, uh, well, I voiced a lot of, like, Bacardi, I voiced, uh, uh, like, Nestle, like, yeah, all the... All kinds of big right. giant stuff. Right. Yeah, Lays. So, then so you, you kind of felt like you had hit your peak there. Yeah. So where'd you go after that? But, but in the music production side, I wasn't connecting, connecting mm. with, uh, because I consider myself an international uh, music producer. You know what I'm saying? I lived in Brazil for a year. I learned bossa nova there. And I don't know, I was in Europe backpacking for a long period and I was living here in the States as well. And I always like, heard like artists, like UK artists, American artists, and uh, I don't know, I have this, this world vision. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I never connected mm -hmm. with, with, uh, with uh, the Mexican music. pop art. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I was feeling that, um, that I needed to, to fulfill that part of my, of my life, you mm -hmm. know? Yeah. And uh, I don't know, I just, I just uh, had a feeling that coming to the States, uh, it was the next step. Uh, for but me. you came to Texas first, so yes. was that part of your KSC? That's part of my KSC. Uh. So what's what? Ha why Texas? What happens in Texas? What happened in, in Texas? KSC. Yeah, uh, why would we want to go to Texas? A good a good friend of mine. We love Texas. Don't get me wrong. We do. Go. We do. We do. I I love Texas. Uh, I was living in Dallas, by the way. Right. Uh, a good friend of mine that I met in Voice Over Atlanta. Uh, it was living in. Is living in Texas still, and he said to me. Because I was doing my research, I came to Miami for a month to see how... Because I was pursuing both, mm -hmm. like voiceover and music production. Yeah. And Miami is well known right. about the Latin music production, okay. you know? And even though I'm not only producing Latin artists, it's part of my, my, sure. my production. So uh, I went to Miami, and then I went to Voice Over Atlanta, and then I found out that in Texas you can find seven of the most important agencies 
for the Hispanic market here in the States. And uh, now that's probably information mm -hmm. that a lot of people wanting yeah. to bring into the Spanish market probably don't even know. Okay. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you guys caught that. Yeah. Seven so, of the biggest agencies for the Spanish market are located in the U.S. Yeah, or in, in Texas. Texas. In Texas. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I would say, I, I, I don't know, maybe I, I would be, uh, maybe I, I'm wrong, but I, I would say that... You're never wrong. Okay. <laughs> I'm never wrong. <laughs> I'm always wrong. No, uh, I would say that probably Texas is the third most important um, spot for, for the Hispanic here in... Mm -hmm. in, in um, mm -hmm. Or Mexican, I would say Mexican too. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because there's a difference between yeah, Hispanic yeah, and yeah. Mexican market. Yeah. Yeah. So a lot of the campaigns for the Mexicans living in the States are made in Texas. Okay, good. And I was coming from this mm -hmm. Mexican world, yeah. so it was... It How was long were you in Texas? For one year. Only one year? Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. It was planned. And that was planned. And then yeah. what, why dis what made you come to here? Because uh, that's when we met. And exactly. That's yeah. when your life changed. Exactly. Well, we yeah. met in Atlanta, yeah. but by then you had already lived here. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, we met briefly yeah, in, right. in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. well, yeah, yeah, I remember. Yeah. I remember that. And um, but but um, when I was living in Texas, I was coming once a month for a week here to start my networking here. You know, mm -hmm. lay down some to find for an agent yeah. and and um, to feel, to be familiarized with all the all the areas and um, and to feel the city. You know. Yeah. And uh, it, it, like, it, it worked. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, I moved and I reinvented myself twice. It was good for me going to, to Texas because, okay, the level of, um, of stress that I was living in Mexico City was only, always in 90%. I only had like 10% gap of, you know, like, mm -hmm. that's why <laughs> I started air. scuba yeah. diving. Yeah. Okay, yeah. but. Uh, <laughs> some peace. And yeah. I needed some air. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So my level of stress in Texas was 30%. Wow. But I needed more. A lot, yeah. yeah, you need a little bit more stress. <laughs> so Something between 30 and 90. So where are you now Here. in LA? Where are you are, yeah. 86? I'm in my, in my fantastic 70. 70! <laughs> nice! <laughs> right? Nice. Oh, that's yes. great, man. It's the one good area of life that if you fall short of 100%, it's good. It's good. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So let me ask you, man, for the people out there, um, uh, for self-direction, because obviously you audition a lot, and I, I see the checks that come in. <laughs> Alfonso's always getting checks from his agency. I'm like, oh, here's more money for Alfonso. <laughs> so obviously you're booking, and you book a lot. Your booking ratio is really good, man. So Thank from you. an auditioning perspective, how do you look at something when it comes in? Do you really, really go crazy with the specs? Uh, what, do, what do you think is it about your auditions that make them strong enough for you to book? I think it's a combination of things. Uh, I mentioned that I was in those sessions, so I understand more the clients. Okay, okay, good. And actually, for a small period of time in my life, I was creative director in this advertising agency. So, and I studied adver I, 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 advertising in Brazil as well. Mm, right. So I think I'm commercial voiceover. I right. don't, I don't cross like because I'm a music producer and I want to invest my my time doing music. Right. Either for TV commercials right. and artists and right. movies and you know, but that's why I don't want to grow, go to dubbing. I don't want to go to character animation. Like I just, I'm just focused in commercial. Yeah. But mm -hmm. I think my my expertise is in commercials because of that. Because I feel um, the uh, the final emotions of the of the. I, I call it breaking the script. And I have a lot of mentors, and I can just mention them and stuff. But at the end of the day. The goal is clear. You have to close your eyes and feel where the campaign is gonna go. You know, and, and we, we work with emotions. Mm -hmm. So what I do is connecting the final goal, the final destination of the product or the campaign I'm recording with that. So I do the connection and, right. and I think that I'm booking a lot because of that. Because at the end of the day, I understand about sales as well. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. and and uh, and so I and sometimes I, I I challenge myself, and I encourage myself to give a, a take, one or two takes, not very close to the specs. Be I, I break the rules sometimes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, because because if I don't feel it, I I send the homework. You know what I'm saying? Like they, they the specs are there, and of, of course you have to give them yeah. what they're looking for, but the last takes. Sometimes I don't, because I don't feel it. I mm -hmm. feel something different, and I think 
it's in another direction. And that happened to me in, advert in, in music production uh, uh, as well. So it's working somehow. Not all the time. Yeah. But, but sometimes I break the rules. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and that gives the producers another perspective. Absolutely. And also and helps sincere. you stand out. It's sincere. Yeah. Because not everybody's breaking that rule. <laughs> So your, your reads sound a little bit different, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but that's cool. So you're thinking of the whole picture rather than just thinking of like, oh, here's a commercial and this mm -hmm. is what they want. So I'm going to give them that. Here you go. See you later. Bye. You're thinking of like, no, no, no. This is a commercial for this. And you're visualizing the visuals for this spot. Who's going to buy it? Where the, where the spot's going to air? What kind of mm -hmm. people are going to watch it? How can you connect with that product, that service and those people and then going with that feel? Totally. On your read. Yeah. Totally. So and are that you, makes I a love difference. That. Yeah. That I, is the way you're really supposed to do it. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Well, I mean, exactly. you may express a different emotion, but the authenticity is, they can feel that. You mentioned the key word, authenticity. Yeah. Uh, guys, you know this. We're in the voiceover world. We work with emotions. If you don't feel it, you don't, you don't. They're not going to feel you it. You cannot, you cannot. Transmit that, you yeah, know. Right. You're saying like, Absolutely. like, so at the end of the day, it's it's about emotions. It's about incorporating those things into your inner core, you know. And and you have to just do it through your voice and be real at the same and time. And be real. Stay, stay relatable and, and true. be real. Yeah. Yeah. But let me tell you something. I have, let me talk about my weaknesses as well. Your I'm the witnesses? announcer. Weaknesses. What's a witnesses? Weaknesses. Oh, weaknesses. weaknesses. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm like witnesses. What we can't are we talk about the witnesses. Weaknesses. The, your your attorney uh, said you can't I'm sorry. talk about I'm just the witnesses. Playing with you. Go. <laughs> Sometimes, like I, I I don't book a lot of um of the acting. Uh huh. I book more the announcer. Mm -hmm. That's what I want to book too. Yeah. You know, because I want to be called again and again. I want to be the voice of the brand. Mm -hmm. But it, it's, I'm not booking those acting because I'm not an actor. Yeah, voice act, voice actor. Yes, but I'm not, I'm not an actor that that could play, whatever. Well, you, know you what I'm probably saying? Like, could. You're just not focused on that. Because you're one of those guys that's like good at everything you put your mind mm -hmm. to. You are, but you're not. I get it. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, yeah. and, and and probably it's 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 very clear in my mind, and uh, my agents are telling me that go to acting classes. And I get it. I get it, but I don't want to be the guy next door all the time. Right. Mm -hmm. I want to be the announcer, you know, for my strategy. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. I have it very clear. Yeah, and mm -hmm. I have to say that in the Spanish market, man, there are a lot of announcers. Yes. You know what I mean? That mm -hmm. voice, that, right? Right. Is, is very popular. Mm -hmm. Right. So at the end of the day, that's, that's my goal. And, and yeah. I have to be the announcer very close to people, very close to the campaign, the emotion. Yeah. So that's, I, I think there's some talents out there, amazing talents that they do everything. Yeah. And they're very successful in everything. Mm -hmm. Don't get me wrong. From my perspective, I just want to be very sharp in one, two or three three th things yeah mm -hmm. that's my perspective that's yeah. my vision that's my strategy for my right career yeah, yeah. so and yeah and let me ask you this real quick man like in the because obviously you know we have the 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 you know american market spanish market there are some bilingual uh voiceover actors they voice spanish mm -hmm. commercials and other things and also english Right, but there's a really big difference. They almost like they don't completely cross over. Like you can't do the same thing that you do in English, mm -hmm. in Spanish, and vice versa, or they just sound kind of weird. So for the Spanish people out there, because I know that you're a master of this stuff, like what seems to be like the hot button, like what's in in the Spanish market, the the, the hot read, the sound. Oh God, that they seem to that's be looking hard, for. That's a hard question. Um... Like, for example, in English, we know that they're looking for that very real, relatable, down-to-earth, very non-announcer uh, totally. type of, uh, of, of delivery. That's what they're looking for in English. Let me ask you something real quick. See, is this something recent or it has like, like you passed like... This has been going on for quite a while now. Yeah. How, long, how long? Oh, gosh. I would say the last few years. Is few been, years? Yeah. Okay. I heard that. 
yeah. seven years ago in Mexico. Really? Yes. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly why I booked this, because they had this very deep voice for this bank in Mexico. Right. You know, like very, well, I, I can give names, but I don't want. And sometimes, <laughs> and sometimes, because I was in the studio, yeah. I was helping the creatives to just give another, another perspective of the campaigns. Yeah. And because I was more, more approachable, more close, like you're saying, yeah. seven years ago, I booked a lot of things and I, be I became of the voice of this important bank because of that right because uh, so we say locutor que no suene locutor so like, announcer that doesn't sound like an, an announcer, announcer. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. yeah yeah but at the end of the day they really need a voiceover talent yeah in the booth mm -hmm. you know because I had a lot of um, <laughs> um, times that the clients they said that but they really want it yeah. An announcer. Mm -hmm. Right, right, right. So you have to be a psychologist as well. <laughs> you, <laughs> you have to read, you like you have to read people. You have to read oh, faces. You have voice to read. Actor, yeah. Yeah. Psychologist. Never yeah. forget. Therapist. Never forget the goal of the campaign. Yeah. Never yeah. forget that you're doing sales, that you are promoting, and you're showing other a product. Yeah. A message for whatever, you know, retro, whatever, whatever the brand is. Mm -hmm. Never forget about that. But you have to read everything in the, on the yeah. on the room. In the room. Yeah. I <laughs> love that though. We're gonna leave you with that. Locutor que no suene suena locutor. Como locutor. Como locutor. Well, that's all we got for part one with Alfonso Lugo. Don't miss part two because it is full of insanely cool information. It is, and don't forget to leave us your comments below. We love you guys. Thanks for watching. And just remember, you, you always, always have time, time for a little buzz. The O Buzz Weekly is sponsored by Chuck Duran's Demo That Rock. Rock. The voice of a demo producer to the stars is now available to you. Visit demosthatrock.com and take your voiceover career to the next level. See you next time, and remember, you always have time.